What's going on guys? My name is Noah and today I just want to talk to you about how I cope with the physical symptoms and just in general with anxiety when it creeps up for me. Now I am someone who is recovering and suffers from an anxiety disorder, just like a generalized anxiety disorder with a couple episodes of panic. Uh, I've been coping and dealing with anxiety my whole life, but things definitely got significantly worse a couple years ago when I had a mental breakdown. And since then, learning to deal with my anxiety when it acts up and when it gets really bad, it's pretty much a weekly thing now. And it used to be a, a moment to moment, hour to hour daily thing. So lately I've had a few stressors in my life that have made my mental health recovery uh, take a few speed bumps, if you will. And I think that's very normal. And I think everyone who's watching this, I don't assume that everyone is dealing with an anxiety disorder and or just some anxiety problems. But I think it's safe to say that you understand the discomfort of anxiety and you understand that maintaining an anxious free life, it takes a lot of work and, and there's a lot of things you can do to minimize your anxiety and there's a lot of things you can do to make the, the likelihood of being anxious less. So for me, when my anxiety gets wrapped up, I tend to have physical symptoms and the most noticeable and, and just stressful physical symptom that I experience is a knot in my chest. This knot feels like I got someone sitting right on my diaphragm, right on my chest here, and it makes taking deep breaths nearly impossible. I have literally freaked myself out so many times just trying to take really deep breaths and going, oh God, I can't take a full breath. I can't get all the air all the way into my lungs. And so then I almost like self-induce some hyperventilation and I try to take too many breaths. So for me, like I said, when that physical symptom of anxiety attacks my chest, which it often does, I still deal with it on a weekly basis, less and less as the months of getting more stable and maintaining a lifestyle that promotes my anxious you know, personality and or mental functions, promotes them being less. Um, let me see if I can round trip this or I may have lost my train of thought there a little bit. Anyway, but one of the things I do when my chest gets tight is I try not to take obscenely huge breaths over and over and over again. I think it's really important for me to remember that if I feel a knot in my chest, it's okay. It, just because it's there doesn't mean I'm gonna panic. Just because it's there doesn't mean I'm gonna spend the rest of my day holding on to a knot in my chest. It just, it is what it is. And I try to take a more mindful approach now. I do my best. Uh, I'm not a pro at it, but I certainly have more experience than I wish I did. So when I have that tightness in my chest, I don't force deep, deep breaths over and over. I'll take a couple, just breathe in, breathe out, and then move on. And I try to distract myself the best I can with healthy, positive things. So for me, when my anxiety gets bad and I feel it in my chest, one of the things I like to do to cope and get through it is exercise. Mind you, there are different degrees of anxiety. I understand that some people, for a while, my anxiety was so so bad. It was so ramped up and aggressive that exercise wasn't a possibility because it only made me more anxious because like my heart was already racing. But if you're in a place where your anxiety is just stressful, bothering you, but not debilitating, something that I really suggest and that has been a lifesaver for me is, is working out as hard as I can. Is If I feel that anxiety in my body, I, I literally beat it out of myself. And I think it works. I think it's very, very, very functional, healthy. It promotes uh, a calmness afterwards and just a better uh, mindful, you know, clear-headedness. It, it helps you. That was a really messy sentence, but. So anyway, for lack of so many words, Work out, exercise if you can. If it's just a small walk, go for a small walk if you feel that anxiety, but get active. Do something to take your mind directly off of whatever physical symptom, or excuse me, yeah, physical symptom of your anxiety that you are experiencing, be it a racing heart, which is very common, something I've experienced, or a knot in your chest. Get some exercise if you can, it helps. I will literally do so many pull-ups that I can't even move. And when you exert that much energy and you put so much of that energy that's pent up in you out, it just tends to have a calming effect. Another thing I do when my anxiety gets bad is I try to basically remove stress from my life if I'm able to. A lot of people feel anxiety about work or uh, obligations or social functions. If you're able to, get out of those situations long enough to, to ride out whatever anxiety you're experiencing. Um, like for example, some people, you get anxious when they go outside and there's a crowd of people. You know, you can avoid those crowds. I think that's called agoraphobia. 
perhaps, and I think I dealt with that earlier in my, my condition and my depression and anxiety, I really struggled being around people. And one of the things that just helped was a little bit of exposure therapy, meaning I would just go around smaller groups of people because it was just more, more, uh, it was easier on me. It was more calming. And I would try to avoid big crowds. So basically avoid the things, avoid the stressors in your life that are going to make your anxiety worse. For me, like, like now, one of the things that definitely makes me anxious that I try to avoid is, uh, is being overcommitted. And I think that's human nature to try to please people and to try to take care of as many things as you can. And I've realized now that while I've gotten more stable, I've also gotten overly committed. And that overcommitment doesn't allow enough me time. It doesn't allow enough time for me to wind down and, and try to do you know, soothing things like, like stretching and breathing exercises and exercise and um, even just relaxing, watching a movie. If you overcommit yourself, your anxiety can get a lot worse too. So you gotta find a balance between trying to be productive, not just sit and do nothing and revel in your anxiety, but also not be so committed that you don't have any time to process and, and life ends up just penting up in your chest. So those are some of the things I do for my anxiety. Another thing to be aware of, and forgive me, this video is all over the place. I really should start outlining these, but I kind of tend to like see what happens when I just let it go, you know, come off the top of my head. But anyway, another thing that um, I know helps is being mindful of how many stimulants you're taking. So a lot of people drink a lot of coffee, which is normal, and I think a cup a day, for example, is not a bad thing, I think it's fine. And there are a lot of health studies, I don't need to get into that, I'm not a doctor. But anyway, if you can limit the amount of stimulants you take, be it energy drinks, caffeinated drinks in general, coffee, don't overdo them. I, I find that early on in my depression, anxiety, I couldn't do any stimulants. I literally had to get that out of my system and, and keep it out of there because I was managing so much anxiety 24-7. But when it got better, I was able to do a little bit. I still find that if I get a little too crazy and I drink a little too much coffee, it definitely can have a negative impact. It can cause me to feel a little more depersonalized. You just get a little more like, like fuzzy in the head. I mean, I know you're, you're amped up, but it's like a kind of a detached, weird amped up. And then that can lead to anxiety getting worse. So I try to be mindful of that. In situations where the anxiety has gotten so bad to where you feel a panic attack might be coming on, which has got to be one of the most scary and stressful and overwhelming and put the fear of God in the experiences of your life. If you've ever had panic issues, which I have, it's terrible. If you think you're getting to that point or you start having suicidal thoughts over your severe anxiety, those are good situations to be able to take an Ativan. You know, I take one milligram of an Ativan once every few months now, which I'm grateful for because I used to have to do it three times a week uh, just to survive. Now I take it once every few months when a situation and or just a circumstance has my brain chemistry out of whack and my anxiety gets super bad, I'll take that benzodiazepine as needed to get me through that moment so that I can get to a more stable place and not take that, that one anxious time frame and blow it into something severe that could affect me for a longer period of time. So I think it's important to have that on hand if you don't. If you're someone that doesn't even know what that is and, and you think you might have an anxiety issue that is, is serious enough that it's affecting your quality of life and your ability to function and, and be an active member in society, go see your doctor about it and see what he or she says. Talk to them about what symptoms you're going through. Uh, I mean, and be mindful of a drug and alcohol abuse history in your background, your family, or in you yourself. I'm a recovering alcoholic. And I have to be mindful of that. It's a thing. I have an addictive personality. I try to plant that addiction in healthy ways now, other places. But I have to be very careful in general. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. But once in a blue moon, I'll take a small dose of Ativan to get me through an anxious moment. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that in general, it gives you a sense of empowerment and lets you know, first and foremost, that you're not alone. There's a lot of us out here struggling with mood disorders, uh, whether it be hormone stuff like testosterone issues or just in general, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, um, depersonalization. You're not by yourself. There are ways to cope with these things, get through them, heal from them, and live uh, live a, a fruitful life regardless of the fact. So I know anxiety is a thing and, uh, and it's always going to be there for a lot of people to manage. I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to learn to live with this, which makes me sad, but it's gotten so much better that I try to just be grateful for that and remember how much worse it was. And I try to gear my life in a way that can promote me being less anxious whenever possible um, and allow me to just live a normal life or as normal as I can. Another thing I should have mentioned, I'm just gonna say real quick, is diet. If you eat healthier, it can be helpful for your anxiety. If you stuff yourself with sugar and 
processed foods and all that stuff. It's pretty intuitive, but anyway, you eat like shit. It can make you feel more anxious in general. Uh, you party and abuse alcohol and drugs too much. It can really affect your anxiety, um, rebound anxiety, stuff like that. I should have talked more about that, but I'm a talker. I didn't know where I was headed with that video necessarily. I just knew it was on my heart because my anxiety has been up and I've been having to cope with it. Self-care is really important. Check out healingfromdepression.com for just awesome tips on how to cope with and deal with anxiety disorders. Uh, the guy who runs the site, Douglas, personal friend of mine, he has handheld me through my mood disorder, my anxiety, and he's got tons of resources for just dealing with your anxiety because he too has. So healingfromdepression.com if you need that support. Write me, hit me up, leave my messages, comments. Uh, I hope everyone's doing okay. And we'll do another video soon. I know whenever I start going on these longer videos that the people that are going to be here, they needed it. You need to hear this. You just need to know you're not alone. You need to hear someone else who's, who's dealt with and survived and is living with these sort of things like anxiety and depression. You know, you need to know that I'm here. People like me are here. There's tons of us. Trust me. I got wonderful people. Um, be they be them like damaged or or not. You know, they message me all the time. We communicate. We have community. You're not by yourself. Probably said that five times. Is it in your head yet? You got it? Good. All right. I'll do another video soon. Take good care. I hope you're doing okay. If you are doing okay, that's awesome. If you're not, just remember you're not by yourself. And it'll get better. All right. Take care. You're not by yourself. There are ways to cope with these things, get through them, heal from them, and live, uh, live a, a fruitful life regardless of the fact 